All right, peace, 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 peace. We're going to talk about the seven more things King Solomon taught about women. I'm going to go into a couple more Proverbs and a couple other scriptures, especially Proverbs number seven. I'm not sure how I missed this on the last one, but we're going to get into it today. So we got seven more things King Solomon taught about women. Hit the like button, guys, and drop a comment in the comment section now. I need the support. All right? All right, so um, first we got Proverbs chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. As you know, King Solomon had a thousand wives and concubines, right? He was one of the wisest men at that time that had ever been, right? He was given a gift of wisdom. But we're going to get into more Proverbs. One of the scriptures that I do want to get into that King Solomon wrote that I'm not going to get into today, but if you guys want to hear me do an entire video breakdown on this, you let me know. That's Ecclesiastics chapter 7, verse 28. While I was searching but not finding, I found one upright man amongst a thousand, but not one upright woman amongst them all. Now, that's, a, that's, that's King Solomon's a quote about women from him. And if you guys want to hear a more elaborate breakdown on that, just let me know in the comment section if you guys care to hear about that. But I'm not going to get into that today. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. It says, My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight that you maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of an adulterous woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil. But, but in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her path wanders aimlessly, but she does not know it. A couple things I want to point out. Um, in this particular, these six verses here. The first thing I want to point out is that it says, for the lips of an adulterous woman drip honey and her speech is smoother than oil. You know what's funny? There was a time where a woman had to have smooth lips. Well, her lips had to drip with honey and her speech had to be smooth as oil for her to get a man to sleep with her knowing that she had a wife. Like There was a time when, when, when you actually had to tell men, be, beware of women that are crafty with their words. And one thing that I've noticed along my journey, journey is women do not have to be crafty with their words anymore. A woman seeking to be an adulterous woman, she doesn't have to drip honey from her lips anymore. She doesn't have to have a, a, a mouth and voice as smooth as oil. Not needed anymore. We've lost such a sense of morality and morals and standards and culture that this aspect is not even relevant in our current time. Right? Now, if, you, if you're going to, if you, if you intend to be upright, I'm not saying an, a, a man that is upright, as, as that scripture just said, one, one upright man amongst a thousand, sure, there may come temptation that we all have to be aware of when we're trying to be upright. Because in being upright, some of the most craftiest temptations can, 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 can come. That's why we pray each and every day that we not be led into temptation, right? Because no matter how upright, nobody's above being tempted, right? So we need the power of God to overcome the crafty of temptations, Right? So I just wanted to point that out, though, just for the, for, for the masses, right? Most people, women don't need, we, 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 people always talk about how women win men with their beauty now, not, not their charisma, not their personalities. The beautiful women don't need personalities anymore. Well, look, according to this scripture, they used to actually have personalities, right? Um, so the next verse I want to point out says, her feet goes down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave, right? How does an adulterous woman's feet go down to death? That's rhetorical, but it's something to think about, right? How does an adulterous woman's feet go down to death? How? So we all know sin leads to death, right? Not only does sin lead to death, sin opens up doorways for death to be invited into our life. That's what most people don't know. People that are committing fornication, adultery, all hatred, wickedness, unforgiveness, whatever sins people are, pornography, masturbation, perversion, whatever you, these sins are, right? The, the performing of sins opens up spiritual doorways for demonic spirits to enter the lives of the people that participate in them. And those spirits ultimately, so a spirit's goal, a demonic spirit's goal and objective in a person's life is to pull you away from God, to pull you away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, to keep you from ever understanding and fully grasping that Jesus Christ came in the flesh, right? That he was before the world was, he came in the flesh and gave his life on the tree for the sins of the world, that all who believe unto him shall be saved. To keep you from fully grasping that, right? Most people can't grasp the importance or the meaning of that no matter how many times they read it 
because a lot of people are blinded by the spirits that they're battling and dealing with. It seems like something that happened 2,000 years ago, so how is it, how is it still relevant to, to, to people today? That's how people see it and think about it, because their mind can't fully be wrapped around the concept and how it still applies to them yesterday, today, and forever. Now, death doesn't necessarily have to be an immediate death. A lot of times, death can be a spiritual death. It can be a death of being able to spiritually discern your right from your wrong. A death from being able to spiritually discern what is just and unjust. It can be a death of you not being able to seek, desire to please, and honor the Almighty God, where you don't even have the drive to seek the face of God. It can be a death of, your, of you disconnecting from life. It's like when Adam and Eve ate the apple, God said they will, they will die. Right now, they lived. Adam, I think, lived to be over nine hundred years old. But the the plan wasn't for him to die. The plan for he had the tree of life. The plan was done for them to live. But in sin, now they died. But they didn't die immediately from eating the fruit. They died after nine hundred years. But you want to make sure that you're not going to die a spiritual death of being blinded by sin. And when you engage in adultery with an adulterous woman that lures you with with her lips dripped with honey and her smooth uh, speech as oil. Right, it's leading to spiritual death and blindness from being able to see, accept, and receive the truth, which will ultimately lead to an eternal death. Right, so this is what we have to be aware of. In sin, there is death. Sin leads to death. All sin falls short of the glory of God. All sin leads to death. All sin invites the demonic world into the lives of the sinner to rule, to take hold, and take root. When people say, man, I can't stop watching porn. I don't know what it is. I I'm trying to quit doing porn, but I just keep getting itched to watch it. You think that's from you? What, what do you think is influencing that desire? What do you think is the root cause behind the addiction, behind the drive? What do you think is the influence there? Right. But it but you invited that influence in when you started watching it in the first place. Right. And we're all responsible. I'm going to do a whole video on this, how God is not a respecter of person. So there's a consequence for every action, whether you know it or not. Right. Now, God is merciful and great. He, he extends grace to each person, whatever he decides. But there's a consequence to every action we commit, whether we know or not. We're each going to have to stand before Jesus Christ one day and give an account for our lives, right? We're going to stand, we're going to all have to stand before the judgment. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So we're all going to have to give an account. And sure, a woman will say, yeah, Lord, I, I was only 16. I didn't know any better. This older guy um, seduced me and he was wittier than me. He was craftier than me. He was smarter than me. He led me into fornication. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was manipulated by somebody older than me, right? But there's still a penalty for sin, right? You, a, lot of, a lot of men are led by other men, right? We're on YouTube watching this guy and that guy, this and this and that. A lot of men and women are both led by demonic spirits. Eve in the Garden of, of Eden was led by the serpent, but she still paid the price. The serpent will have their day too. Right? They'll have their penalties and their consequences too, but so are you for falling into the whimsicals of the serpent. You'll have your day if you go without repentance, right? If you go without seeking salvation through Jesus Christ, you will have your day. That's what I, I just want to make sure that that's clear and that's out there for anybody that, that needs to hear that. Everyone's going to have their day. And you're not going to be able to pl blame the person that was smarter than you. We can all be deceived. We can all be manipulated. We can all be tricked. There's always somebody smarter, faster, wittier, and more cunning. That's why we need God. That's why we need God and we need a relationship with God through Christ Jesus. Because without that, we can fall victim to beings, creatures, even human beings smarter and more craftier than us. But we can also fall victim to people. Right. I mean, we, I mean, we can also fall victim to, to spirits that live in other dimensions and realities that are craftier, that have existed thousands of years, that have manipulated and, 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 and tricked and tripped up and tempted men wiser and, and greater than, than all of us and got them to fall. So none of us are above that. Let's go to the next one. Proverbs chapter five, verse 20, 21 through 23. Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman or fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman? For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress? For your ways are full in view of the Lord, and he examines all your paths. For lack of discipline, they will die, led astray by their own great folly. Let me read that one more time. Why be captivated, my son, by an immoral woman? Right, another translation says... Wait, it says, or fond of the breast of a promiscuous woman. For why should you, my son, this is another translation, says, for why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced, 
in the arms of a seductress or a promiscuous woman. Right? Why should you be embraced in the arms of a promiscuous woman? Do you not know better than this? Do you not know that this leads to death and destruction and spiritual blindness? Do you not know better than this? Do you not know that this opens portals and doors to demonic spirits? Do you not know better than this? Right? Why should you be captivated, my son, or fondle the breast of a promiscuous woman? Why should you be dealing with a promiscuous woman? Right? And be embraced by the arms of a seductress For your ways are in full view of the Lord Don't you know that God sees you Don't you know that he sees every action and move that you make That when you're in the arms and fondling the breast of a seductress A promiscuous woman, an adulterous woman Don't you know that God sees you Don't you know that he is in full view of every single action that you take The Bible says not even a sparrow falls to the ground Not even a sparrow falls to the ground Right outside the will or the view of our God, our Father in heaven and, and, and how much more valuable are you than these, than sparrows, right? So how much more are your ways being observed and viewed? If even the sparrows, not even a single sparrow falls to the ground outside of the, the knowledge and view of our Father in heaven, right? So, and then he goes on to say, for lack of discipline, for lack of discipline, they will die. So for lack of discipline to avoid promiscuous women, they will die, led astray by their own great folly. This is Proverbs chapter 5, 20 through 21. For lack of discipline, they will die, led astray by their own great folly. For lack of discipline, for lack of the ability to say no and turn their, 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 their urges away from, a, from the promiscuous woman, they will die, led astray by their own great folly. Let's continue to the next one. It's Proverbs 7, we're going to get deep. Proverbs chapter 6, 26. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread, and the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. For by means of a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. So a man, by the means of an adulterous woman, right? When a man gains riches and success, you know how a lot of these artists, and I, I'm not going to say this for sure, this is just my opinion, right? You, you get your artists, your, your, your rappers, your hip-hop artists, their first album is amazing, right? When, when they don't have much going on and it's their breakthrough, they've been grinding, they've been hustling, they've been trying to get a break. Um, and it's a little different now because we got the internet and people could blow up overnight, but traditionally, they've been grinding, they've been looking for a break, they've been looking to get a breakthrough, they've been hustling, they, they've been, they got their one girl that they've been with 20, 30 years, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, or they've been focused, whatever their situation is, Right? And they get a break, boom, they blow up. Now they get access to all these different kinds of women, right? And some of these women are around that have this nature, the nature by a whorish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Then their music just doesn't sound the same. A lot of these NBA players, they, they get all this money, they, they get all these women in their life, right? Um, they get all this money and all these women in their life, and then what happens to all the money? Right? I think it's like 85% of them don't have the money, right, a couple years out of the NBA, Right, is they get access, this is my opinion here, they get access to all these women, all these opportunities, and they're bought to a piece of bread. Look at some of the top athletes, and I don't think this is for no reason, this ain't all of them, but a lot of them. The LeBron Jameses, the Stephen Currys, the Kobe Bryants, the Michael Jordans, all these men are married, right? At the very least, they're married, they have a certain foundation upon which they, they build on. All these men are married. You got a couple other guys, and we'll, we'll see what happens to them in a few years, right? But, but for the most part, a lot of these men are married, right? Because in, in the very discipline that they use to stay successful in their career, so whatever they decide to do, is probably the discipline that they use to maintain the structure of their marriage, right? So it says, for by the means of a horse woman, a man is brought to bread. I heard a story, I know a story of a man who was succeeding and thriving and there's this girl that came into his life. And then after a couple of months, his business started failing. Then he got away from the girl. After a few more months, his business started succeeding again, right? Then he's thriving and succeeding again. Then after a few more months again, his business is, is, is he, he meets the girl again and his business is back in the tank again. And he gets away from her and his business starts thriving again. This is a story I've heard, right? And, and I know people, there's people that have these stories in their real life <laughs> through sin, what we have is taken away, especially through rapping. All sin is bad, but especially when you're fondling in the arms of a woman that is promiscuous because she could be filled with things whose objective is to bring you down as their objective is to bring her down to death and destruction. Um, Proverbs chapter 9, verse 13, a foolish woman is clamorous. She is simple and knoweth nothing. Be careful for loud 
clamorous, just means loud and boisterous, think they know everything, refuse to listen. Women that are always trying to share an opinion instead of asking questions to learn something. So be aware, be, be, be careful and be aware of that. And now we're going to go to Proverbs number seven. So I'm, I'm, we're going to finish on Proverbs number seven. We're going to break this down. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, Proverbs number seven says, my son, keep my words and treasure my commandments within you. Keep my commandments and live. Guard my teachings as the apple of your eye. Tie them to your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister and call understanding your kinsmen that they may keep you from the adulteress, from the stranger with seductive words. For at the window of my house, I looked through the the latest and saw the simple. I noticed among the youths a young man lacking judgment, crossing the street near her corner, strolling down the road to her house at twilight as the day was fading into the dark of the night. Then a woman came out to meet him, with the attire of a harlot and a cunning heart. I'm going to do a whole video on verse 10. What the attire of a harlot is. She is loud and defiant. Her feet do not remain at home. Her feet does not remain at home, right? Be careful of a woman whose feet do not remain at home. That want to be all out into the world, right? Now, in the street, now in the square, she lurks at every corner. She seizes him and kisses him. She, brazes, she brazenly says to him, I have made my peace offerings today. I have paid my vows, right? She's presenting herself as a religious woman, right? She made her peace offering and paid her vows, right? She's presenting herself as a, as a religious, as a righteous woman. So I come out to meet you. I sought you and I have found you. I have decked my bed with coverings and colored linen from Egypt, have perfumed my, my bed with mirth, with aloes and with cinnamon. Come, let us take our fill of love till morning. Let us delight in love. Let us delight in loving caresses. For my husband is not at home. He has gone on a long journey. He took with him a bag of money and will not return till the moon is full. With her great persuasion, she entices him. With her flattering lips, she lures him. He follows her on impulse, like an ox going to the slaughter, like a deer bounding into a trap until an arrow pierces his liver like a bird darting into a snare not knowing it will cost him his life thing this act of adultery this act of fornication with this married woman will cost him his life right now my sons listen to me and attend to the words of my mouth do not let your heart turn aside to her ways do not stray into her paths for she has brought many down to death her slain are many in number her house is the road to Sheol, descending to the chambers of death right so this is her her house is the road to hell descending to the chambers of death right and now again there were, there were th- 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 men are chasing these women today, right? Men are desiring these women today. So this was at a time where fathers were warning their son that these women were coming out to seduce men, right? And, and, and their paths were lead to death. One of the verses before that I wanted to point out says, she gives no thought to the way of her life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. So what he's saying is this woman is being ruled, Right? This woman is being ruled. She's not doing this necessarily out of choice. She's not out in the streets seducing young men, bringing them to death by choice. It may not even be her that's doing it. What we got to understand is sometimes the woman that's texting you, hey, big head, from out of the blue is being ruled by a spirit that's seeking to entrap you again because you've turned away from sin. So sometimes that, hey, big head text from that girl that you... That, that, that broke up with you or, or stopped returning your calls and now she all of a sudden pops back up. Sometimes when you get on the righteous path, the spirit, the demonic spirits in her give her the idea, right, to reach back out to you so that the demonic spirits that once left you can come back to you through you reengaging with her again. They work together. So they may not get you directly. Sometimes they say, hey, um, they go to the spirits and the girl and say, hey, how about you get her to text how about you start giving her feelings of missing that guy so that she can text him so that they can come back together and fornicate again so a door could be opened up for me to go back into his life. Sometimes when you get free, when you get free from bondage and people come back under bondage and they don't realize how, it's because sometimes there's a plan at work to get you back in bondage, right? To remove you from freedom. 
So that don't that, that that girl after the no contact or whatever you got going on, sometimes she ain't popping back up because she love you. Why you think once you start feeling good, once you start moving on in life, once you start not thinking and worrying about a woman or anything, now they all start popping back up wanting to come back around. Why do you think that is? You think that motivation is solely because of them? Or it, or because you're becoming free, because you're being released from bondage, something seeking to keep you in bondage wants her to get you back into bondage by re-triggering those old emotions again, right? So that's the sign you want to be aware of. These women that these are being described of, they're not doing this intentionally, right? They're not always completely doing this intentionally. Sometimes it's by mistake. Sometimes they're being ruled by another force. But all right, guys, peace, 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 and love. That's the video for today. As you guys know, all glory, honor, power, and blessings and praise to my Father in heaven. In the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son that came in the flesh and gave his life on the tree for the sins of the world, that all who believe unto him shall be saved. If you got any questions about God, you got any questions about any of this, uh, send me an email, adfuser.gmail.com. If you want to have a discussion about God, you question your faith or what to believe in, I can help you out with that. So just let me know. But alright guys, man, peace, peace, peace and love. I appreciate all the support. Make sure you guys hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. Hit the share button as well. Spread the message so that I can keep coming out with good content and reaching everybody up. If you're not subscribed to the Patreon, get on Patreon for more videos as well. Peace, 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 peace.